Hello beautiful, I hope you're well. It's Epic Treasure in this video tutorial today I've made just for you to teach you how to build a cabin by the waterfall's base. Now, this is going to be user friendly, it's going to show you timestamps, it's going to show you coordinates, it's going to show you an overhead shot of the base to know exactly the dimensions, etc. It's also going to have a little few tutorials in there to show you how to build on terrain like this, which can be very fiddly and a little bit intimidating for new builders. But I've got you, don't you worry. It's going to be house tour at the end too. Full collection. So if you like what you think, I'm like, subscribe, you know what to do. Let us begin. So, number one, location. Let's get our bearings at 188 minus 42. That's where I'm flying. You can see I put the PAL, PAL base down there. And what's important to remember in PAL world is the PAL base not only defines the breadth of the zone that you can build in the horizontal plane, but also it's limitless virtually when it comes to vertical building. So if you check out another video on my channel, you'll see me build a massive tower, the tallest point in the whole entire game. And I sounded like one of the Irwins, Steve Irwin, tallest point of the tower on this game, right? You can build it so high with so many different levels. It's mind blowing. And there's a lot of, I think, people that don't think about that sort of thing. They sort of think, oh, OK, put a farm on this. Cool. Flat area land. No, you can build so high it's crazy so for example with this build if we got that pal box and we charted it into the land more we could put farms and everything up there and then build all the way down to the waterfalls beyond and beyond again so you could have all your land up there in secret little uh, little cabins all the way scattered down the landscape if you want to um, so consider that too. It's not just this is the only pot, plot of land that's just a, just a circle. It goes all the way down, which is very exciting. <sighs> now, let us begin. So your friend in this game when it comes to building on crazy terrains like this is going to be your foundations. Let's get off the mount and get rid of the mount for now. So your foundations are wood, stone, metal. They all behave the same. Wooden foundation. Now, we can put up wooden foundations so they're taller or shorter. So when we're on weird terrain, we can actually make them step-like to you know, fill in spaces. But the hot tip is, when you're building this for decking, make sure that you build this in at the closest point to the wall. And that allows you to build a wall on the back of it. So the closest point to the rock, if that makes sense. So up here, we sort of assess which rock juts out the most, put our foundation, say, if we put it here, the only place that we can put a wooden wall is all the way out there with this big wasted space. But if we get our foundation and we rub it right against the wall like there, then we have all this extra space to deal with. You know what I mean? So it clears that rock. When we do our build over here, we're going to show the example of what happens when the landscape infiltrates your build space. Just a little experiment, if you will. So once you put your foundation down, that's where everything else is going to be dependent on where, like where that continues on. So here is where it goes. There might be anomalies in the landscape that will stop you from building. So it could be, um, you know, another rock sticking out. Sometimes you can build it there. A lot of the time, people might be standing in their own square and wonder why they can't build it. Get out of your square and build it. Sometimes the, your pal, your flying mount could be in the square. It could be a dropped item in that square. Make sure it's clear. Sometimes it can be a tree in there. Um, sometimes you can build with trees there. So it's just really muck around and find out, basically. So that's how we use our foundation. And because we put it so close to the wall we're able to build a pretty, you know, neat, flush kind of wall along them. So that's how you build that. So that goes for stone, it goes for metal um, and wood, obviously. So let us get on our beautiful mount, fly across here, and we'll begin. So your shape of whatever you're building could be different to this. Um, and basically, you just have ha happy accidents, if you will. Um, but this is my base, and we'll have a look at the shape of it, which is going to go on any piece of land in any part of the game. Um, 
providing that it's you know not stuck in the edge of a cliff that's worse than this. So the first thing I like to do is not set fire to the deck, but have a look at the environment that we've got and see what needs windows and what does not. So the waterfall is our main feature here. We don't want to totally cover it up, but I want to see some of it from inside the house. So we know that a, a window wall is going to go there. You could have this whole deck open if you wanted to. Question is how much time you're going to spend out there. I don't know. You might want to role play. So another window would go here. So look at your views. Yes, views, yes, views. And then, you, thankfully, with 100% um, return on your things that you break, which has saved the entire game, I think, um, you know, it's, it's never a problem. People say they'd like to move stuff, but it really doesn't matter that much. What I think they should do is have a blueprint, very much like, I think it was Lego World, maybe, the Lego game, where you could build something, you make a blueprint of that, and then save it. What a great idea that would be. You could put a castle down everywhere. So that being said, we know that we can't build a wall there because there's rocks there. We can't, there's no point of putting a wall there, but we have to do it here, okay? We're going to do a beautiful pitched roof with this. You would have seen that in the thumbnail. This is our dilemma. So this is where we sort of learn how to deal with our environment. So when it comes to walls, we can't build, we can build one at the back there, but we can't build there or there. So we know already that we need to build that there. We don't want to look at that wall. I mean, I suppose you could put a torch out there and some, you know, vines on the wall, but it's a bit strange. I don't want to look at that. You could do whatever you want. So already we have this amazing water view from all these windows. So we're going to build the front now, which is going to be a wooden door over here. Then we're going to put some windows because it is a very scenic place. One here and one there. We're going to have some stairs that go here. Okay, wooden stairs, down. Now, if you're building on flat land, obviously you don't even need stairs, so don't even worry about that. In that case, if you're building on flat land, then you would just put another wooden foundation down next to it. But because we're on the edge of a cliff, it's a little bit different. So let us fly. We're going to put in one more door here to entry over here. Okay. Flying above, this is what your build looks like. So remember this. Two on the left, three in the middle, one on the right. We're going to have a pitched roof and everything. Don't you worry. Now, when it comes to the pitch roof, it depends on how tall you want this. If you want a little, little log cabin, then only go one high, but we're going to go double. Just have this beautiful ceiling. So first of all, we need to get the wooden wall in the middle because we need to create our structure. So if we want it to be like a quaint little tiny place, we put four squares of wood or whatever you're building in and then the pitched roof like that. So we're going to look outside to show you what that looks like as the basic kind of little, little one, you know. I don't, I'm not a massive fan of that. I want it to be like, you know, somewhere where you want to stay. It's got a big one. So we're going to do it again and we're going to build it six high. So we've got two across, three down, okay? Now this part is where we sort of learn the creative building part. When you come across uh, the landscape that eats into your build, and it's certainly not a thing where you need to deconstruct your entire base. You know, a lot of the time people spend all this time building and then suddenly it's like, oh no, this has ruined my whole build. It doesn't have to. Sometimes you just have to be flexible with the landscape. So when it comes to issues like this, we can just put, for example, a wooden wall that blocks that and we don't even have to look at it again. Or you could, for example, break that, break that, break that. And then you could put literally a door that goes outside to this little, you know, magical area you put some lights out there put a little chair secret chair out there if you wanted to uh, whatever tickles your fancy but it's really going to depend on what's up here that tells you what you can build you know you might try and build a wall that won't fit for example so it thankfully it gives you 100% return on things that you break so if you break something and then it doesn't 
uh, it doesn't work out, you get your materials back, which is very cool. So another window up here, and then uh, we're going to do the sloped roof. So we're going to jump up here on, remember it's three high for the slope roof. And the wall that it's connecting to needs to be two. So it's three high in the middle, two on the right side. Make sure you build these walls first. So always build your walls first. So again, remember, two high. We're going to break those anyway, so it does not matter. So again, we want to go over here. And then we're going to do our roof. So again, the hot tip for roofs is make sure that that cross hair is on the connecting point of where you want it to connect to. So people have got issues with putting roofs on, they're like, why can't this go up? I don't understand. Get your crosshairs and put them on the uppermost point of where you want it to connect to like that, see? Now we've got our, our sloped roof. When it comes to the triangles, again, click it onto where it, like it might look like that. You go, oh God, it's not going in. Rotate it, if you're on Xbox, be R, B, left B until it's blue and then put it down, right? So the next part we're gonna do is we're going to do the sloped roof on the other side. Again, we need it too high and the three is still in the middle. We're gonna do this back wall too and then we're gonna climb up the top. And we could just build it from there if we wanted to. So wooden slanted roof there. And then we're going to put our yep. wooden slanted roof there, which connects to that wall on the outside. And then don't forget to put your triangle wall to connect it up there. Remember to rotate. So now all of our stuff's connected. So that roof is not going to come down if it has connection. We could break all that roof, basically. We could break all of, the, all of this. If that's still connected to the ground by that, those two walls, it'll stay up. So that's a handy thing to keep in mind if you want to make a massive awning too. So again, we're just going to put the window there. We're going to put the triangle up here, rotate. And again, over this side, same story. That triangle, put it into position, done. Now you know we can break every single wall. Now go easy with this, because if you break the wrong one, you're in trouble. Okay? So there we have our cabin. Now you might not like this little secret area at the back. You might like it, you might not like it. You put the light out there, like I said. Or you could break it and put down the wooden window, the wooden roof, another wooden window, let me do it there and above it remember to build from the ground up like that if you wanted to if that tickled your fancy and then don't forget your triangle with at the top done so you could change that one so it doesn't have a window you could do it when you get rid of that other thing outside like that and you could still make you could still make the door if you wanted to Pick up all your stuff in the landscape, remember. Wooden door. Like so. Now you know damn well you can actually put stairs basically on any of these um, on these foundations. So we could put one over there too if we wanted to. Splashing, splashing in there fun. Little secret space. Um, so Let's have a look from the front and how it looks to make sure you got everything built right. Look at that. She's looking fine and dandy, huh? Um, and if it tickles your fancy, you could, um, you know, put 
uh, stairs, like if you wanted to, you could have stairs going up there. So let's just pretend that that's what we want to do. Uh, we go, uh, we could go uh, put a roof, roof on here, then put your stairs over here. And then look at that, straight up. Oh, nice little cup of tea at the waterfall if you wanted to. Uh, but not everything's going to fit. And sometimes wooden foundations won't connect, but sometimes wooden roofs do like that. Look at that. It's touching the waterfall. And then you can sort of push the boundaries and see how far you can build again, you know. Oh, look at that. Literally touching it. You know, does that mean we can build around the back? Yeah, it does actually. You know what I mean? So that's a very cool part. It's literally you can... Just keep building and keep pushing the boundaries and trying because that, what we just did then, can essentially lead to a whole new level um, of the loft area here. But you won't be able to access it from down the bottom just because the stairs, the stairs won't be able to reach the loft. We don't have that floor space. But that gives you an idea of, you know, just prodding and poking and seeing what works and just... Yeah, creatively building, but let's just take it back to where it was in the first place. Make that wall, wooden roof, rotate, shut the door, and back to normal again. You know what I mean? So you could just change, you know, chop and change it as much as you like, and I think that just looks beautiful as is. So that is how you build the house. Um, let's do an aerial flyover of it, of what that looks like. And then let's get on with the house tour after I decorate it. Indeed, a beautiful spot again. Let's have a look at the location, which is 177.8. But the cool place uh, that's over across the road is this meta mining spot too, which has eight nodes of ore and six nodes of coal. So there's that bonus from being right across from here. Um, this one's absolutely beautiful. Let's go have a look inside. We've got double staircase. We've got the build that is just in front of the waterfall. Um, not too much to cover it up, but enough to just accentuate the flow of it. Um, behind the house, just next to the waterfall, you'll see uh, a campfire. So don't worry, it's not close enough to the house to burn it down. Uh, it's just there. So that illuminates it and illuminates the water just very nicely too. So let us go down here and have a little sneak peek. Down here we have the amazing waterfall feature, um, quite loud, and we've got little stairs going into it in case you want to frolic in there. Um, over here we have the view of the other waterfall. We've got the barrels there, which is used for storage. And then the lovely view over here um, of the table and from the table and chairs into beyond over the beautiful mountains etc and also the other waterfall there so in the house when we go in we've got some ivy on the wall we've got a couple of um, bench seats there with some pot plants and a, a mount a freestanding torch and then inside we just have the basic uh, worker bench and also the repair bench too, with another little view out the windows from here, from your workspace. And then we've got the table and chairs there with another view of the beautiful waterfall and the fireplace, and then the lovely bed there with another mounted torch. A little secret area at the back here goes to the waterfall beyond. You could put some tables and chairs out there if you wanted to. I didn't mean to sleep then, but that's okay. But an absolutely lovely house. We'll have a little flyover again. I will light those torches one more time because it just adds to the effect. But yeah, it's really beautiful to have um, that illumination of the waterfall just with that, that fire down there too. I think you could put some more if you want it even, you know, bigger. Um, but look at this. Absolutely ideal. When you take photos of that, click. Really lovely. There we go. All right, let's have a little flyover again. That's stunning. A really, really beautiful location.
Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Until next time, happy adventures in Power World.